Okay. Now what I'd like to do is begin with a review of what we did yesterday and just adding a couple of things to what we did. I'm seeing your reaction. Do you feel awkward with us recording during this class? No. It's kind of fun. It's what? It's fun. Okay, good. <laughs> when they're in compounds, <laughs> your reaction was funny. Um, yeah, they, every organic compound, every single carbon in there has to make four bonds. You'll never see any exceptions to that. So uh, knowing that carbons have to make four bonds, uh, when you have a middle carbon, you know that it's got a carbon on the left and a carbon on the right, and so if there's nothing else attached to it, that means it's going to have two hydrogens. The ones on the left, they only have a carbon, one carbon attached, so they have room for three hydrogens. All right. Another way to represent that, we talked about condensed formulas yesterday. Take a look at this. Does this work for you? Is this the same thing as that? Yeah, so you'll see uh, formulas expressed like that when there's many repeating of the same uh, component, then they'll just say, you know, give the component one time. How many are there? So uh, that's true. Now this next one, you're going to look at it and you kind of roll your eyes and say, come on. But there's a place for it. Another way to represent hexane is like this. chemistry book and you'll see these all over the place and what the, uh, the author or the uh, whoever is trying to um, portray is at the end of every line segment there's a carbon in the hydrogens are completely understood so you have one two three four five six carbons on that thing strange I know uh, but this is quite common for compounds to re be represented uh, with just these these zigzag lines. We're going to now take a look at uh, um, a different type of compound, and, and I'll be coming back to these uh, in short order. Going back to the uh, the normal way that hexane is uh, represented. The bigger and longer that molecules get, the more that they can. Uh, they can be flexible and, and uh, bend and twist, you know, and uh, there are some organic molecules called macromolecules that are huge. They can be thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands or millions of carbons long. Gigantic molecules. Well, those kinds of molecules, they're not just straight. They're, they're very flexible and, and uh, uh, they, can, uh, they can wrap around themselves and twist around and, and do different things. Proteins are like that. Proteins uh, will, will get twisted up and they're even kind of be held together in the twisted position by hydrogen bonding within the molecule. Um, the, the function of a protein can kind of be affected by the way that it's twisted up. Now coming back to this thing, this is like a moderate sized uh, particle for what we're used to so far. But the longer they get, the more able they are to kind of wrap around and they can actually this carbon and this carbon can join together and make a bond. Could you see that happening? It would be a ring structure, we would call it, uh, where this and this, as long as it's long enough, 
and uh, come together. What would have to happen in order for this carbon to bond to that carbon? What? Right, very good, good eye on that. This carbon would have to lose a hydrogen, and that carbon would have to lose a hydrogen, so that each of them would have a bonding site. So when that is done, then we're gonna have two less hydrogens than we had before. You follow that? And where would those hydrogens go? Well, they would make hydrogen molecules bubble up. All right, if that happens, that would make a structure that looks like this. And then we have all the hydrogens in there. This takes a long time. You see how tedious writing all these hydrogens is? There they are. The name of this compound, can we call this hexane now? It's not hexane anymore, that's hexane. Hexane is C6H14. What's this? C6H12, they're not gonna have the same name. This thing would be called cyclohexane. Writing all this is a big pain. How about we shorten that down? We can shorten it a lot by doing this. That's cyclohexane. Using the same, uh, what, representation or idea or convention uh, of using these, every corner, every end of line segment has a carbon and the hydrogens are just understood. So, if I said, hey, here's an organic molecule, <laughs> you're like, no, that looks like a pentagon. But no, it's an organic molecule. What is it? Cyclopentane. What's its formula? Good. C5H10. Yeah. So yeah, we can have ring structures as well. Very simple way of uh, representing them uh, because it does get kind of messy. Well, look at the hydrogen. I mean, it, it's, it's too busy, right? This is very clean. All right, do you suppose that uh, we could have functional groups on a ring structure? You think that could happen? Oh yeah, that could happen too. You think we're gonna have to name those? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think so. Okay, if you insist. Here is a cyclohexane molecule, and how about I just do that? What would be the name of that compound? Yes. What's that? I'm hearing methyl cyclohexane. You want to add a number to it? No? There's not two, there's one. That's right. Uh, let's start by doing this. I have a question for you. It looks like there's a methyl group. Does that mean that the parent chain here is cyclohexane and the methyl group is not part of the parent chain? No? So it starts here and it comes over here and then it kind of ends right back there. I'm going to tell you this. I asked the question just to try to get you to think about it and ponder. Okay, there is a carbon and it's attached to other carbons that are attached to other carbons. Shouldn't this all be one big parent chain? The answer is when you have a ring structure like this, a cyclic hydrocarbon, uh, that ring part is the parent. And so this methyl group is kind of like a side chain around that ring. Yes, it's a functional group. It's not part. You're not going to suddenly rename this heptane or whatever just because there's seven carbons in there. Just like if I had this thing right here and I did this. This is a branch. Yes? 
uh, just like this is a branch coming off the parent chain. Um, so yeah, we're not going to call this thing heptane because it has seven carbons in it. It's a, uh, a substituted hexane. When the substitute, it just means that one of the hydrogens has been replaced by a, a function. Okay, now I want to come back to the, uh, the name of this thing. So this is the parent cyclohexane. We have a methyl group on it. Do we need to give this thing a number? And if so, what number would we give it? Would we call it one methyl cyclohexane? Would we call it two or three or six? What, what do you want to call it? Anybody have any thoughts about that one? How about if I called it one methyl cyclohexane? Would you be able to live with that? Meaning that this carbon in the ring is carbon number one, and that decreases or minimizes the uh, the number of the functional group. Is that okay? Anybody wonder anything about it? Julianne? Uh, whatever would minimize the number. Make sure you minimize the number. Yep. You're, you're a step ahead of me. That's the next thing I was going to do is put another functional group on here. But before we do that, does anybody wonder anything about this name? I wonder, do you need the number? If I didn't put a number on this, and I said, draw a structure of methyl cyclohexane, would you come up with something that looked like that? Yeah. Okay, now, does it matter that your methyl group would be coming off of there, that carbon, the one on the far right? What if you drew one coming off of like the top left? Still the same thing. Just take this and rotate it. Oh, there's your methyl on the top left. Right? You didn't change the, uh, the molecule. Yeah. The H is connected to the pH. Yes. Okay. Yep. H yeah, this C has lost H. All these other C's are CH2s. This is a CH with this CH3. Okay, so this will work fine as the name. Beca uh, yeah, because the number is kind of redundant. When you only have one functional group on a ring, then you know automatically where the functional group is number one, carbon. Okay. I'm going to erase this and go back to this. And how about we put another functional group on. I'm going to make it a chlorine. Would you take a moment and write the name of this compound on a piece of paper, if you're taking notes or whatever on your notes. And when you're done, I want you to look at the person's paper next to you and see if they have the same thing. This is the part where you turn to the person next to you. You're not going to get caught on camera. I don't think. Okay, I know he's pretty sly. You yeah, can, can probably catch him. You want to get up and survey the room, Kaya? Give these guys some props. Good. They, they deserve it. The student interaction. I should submit this to the administration. Look at all everybody talking about my What did you say? Did you say for your, uh, I'm not completely done. I'm just like... <laughs> hey guys, what did you answer? Oh. It's not going to go on YouTube. My answer is uh, Jesus is always the answer. I think it's Zoom. It's just like so close. All right, gang, anybody bold enough to give a shot to naming this thing? You want to try it? Methyl cyclohexane, comma, three, four. Hold on, hold on. Methyl cyclohexane. There's so many letters. You want a comma? Uh, yeah. Uh, three, chloro, cyclohexane. 